Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake, and this sh should be the last video in the little set of videos I'm doing that shows you how to get data, RTN, GPS vector data, or RTK GPS vector data, and toll station data out of Trimble Business Center into StarNet, run an adjustment. If you watched the last video in the set, uh, we went ahead and processed just our total station data, and we found we had a couple errors in our DAP file, so I was, uh, when I merged my horizontal angles with my distances and vertical angles I was off one row on the first four sets so we fixed that and then we had a rod height bust uh, one of these f uh, shots to a target that had a 5.2 rod was marked with an 8.5 so we fixed that ran our adjustment we got some pretty good values uh, our air ellipses at 95 percent or less than five hundredths uh, so uh, good good adjustment on the total station data so what we're going to do now is we're going to add our GPS data and uh, I did this particular test for a reason. Um, part of it was to show that um, RTN GPS is really not as good as people think it is and it gets used and abused and uh, we're going to show this this was just a, some test data at our office here but part of what I, I think this demonstrates is if you want to meet the land title survey spec of, of 700 at plus or minus 95 percent confidence level uh, you can't use RTN to shoot your control or your property corners because uh, you're going to see here in a minute that that when we add in so right now just i just i want to make sure everybody understands with just the total station data on this data set we meet the land title survey spec of 700 of a foot at 95 percent confidence okay and that it, we can prove that here with with this report okay so this bottom section of the report shows i don't have anything over 700 of a foot here at 95 percent confidence level and just so we can run the comparison what i did was i went ahead and I just saved this data and called it Network Adjustment Results No GPS and just saved it as a text file. And uh, you can do that. It's fairly easy to do that. You just right click here and say select all and then paste in your text editor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the GPS data. I'm just going to check this. We're going to rerun the adjustment and we're going to look at how our values change here. And I've already done this so I know what's going to happen. But let's let's go ahead and see. So we went ahead and ran it. You can see I've got a problem. I'm not converging now that I've added my GPS data. And things are really bad here. <laughs> so we got to go in and figure out what happened. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at our GPS data and see if we can figure out what happened. All right. Part of the reason this fell apart, guys, when I added the GPS data is because these values that came out of TBC are, are actually, there was a... a when we exported the Trimble data exchange format data, we actually didn't get good values. Um, so if you open the TBC project and look, I believe these are the metric values, um, and that's not what we want because we told it we were in state plane. Um, so we want to go ahead and, and we want to fix these coordinate values. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've got that ready to clean up. Okay, so these are our coordinate values in state plane, 2 million by 6 million. Okay, so what we're going to do just to make sure that we're being careful is we're just going to rerun the adjustment with just the total station data now that we replace these values, coordinate values, and we're going to make sure that we still get a good answer. Okay, so I am still getting a good answer here. Okay, but I need to resave my network adjustment report now because I've got the right coordinate values in it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select that, copy it. You guys can't see this because I'm on my other screen, but I'm just going to paste that into my text editor. Okay. So now let's try the let's try and add the GPS file again with the right coordinate values. All right. So now we went ahead and the, the network ran. We can come down here and say, see our values aren't too bad. But you notice my GPS deltas are way bigger than my toll station data. Okay. And you can see, looks like I exceeded my C square test again. So it found more error than I told it to expect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. Here's the error values I have in for my R10. So I want to come down and just look at, I know my total station is good. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just looking at my values here. So looking at my total station values, this is the difference. I believe these are Earth center, Earth fixed coordinate deltas. Okay, I'm not going to get into major explanation on that, but here's what I want to know. You know, what's my standard error? So it gives you your X, your Y, and your Z. So these are about 500. I'm just going down again looking for a blunder. I don't see any. So we probably have reasonable amount of, you know, we probably have a reasonable network adjustment here. It's just the, the chi square test is failing because I didn't, um, my error about my error expected error values are too low. Is what it looks like to me. So again, I'm going to come down here and look at this, uh, my error values. My error values are reasonable. So this just tells me I don't have any blunders in my data, right? Uh, the problem is my my error settings aren't properly configured. So let's go ahead and let's go in and change our, we got to bump up our errors in the RT, the RT and R10 instrument and see if we can get this thing to pass the T-square test. Oop, so I'm going to go ahead and come into our instrument library, company instruments, grab this R10. Okay, so, and you know what, it may not be, I'm not sure, I got to ask somebody, it may not be using this because this looks like it's set up for a total station. So we're going to go in and, let's see, can I make a new, yeah, I think that's just for conventional instruments. So let's go into our project settings whoop, and see if we can adjust our GPS data. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out because that's for a conventional instrument. And we're going to just configure the GPS settings in the in the project. Uh, so I think my centering errors are pretty good. You know, those guys ought to be able to do that. But I'm probably not, I don't have enough of a uh, standard error here on the GPS vectors. So because this is RTN, I'm going to bump this up. I'm going to make this 10 and 15. Okay, and that and that we want to do that anyways because that's going to put more of the adjustment on the GPS vectors instead of the total total station vectors, which is what we want. So let's see if this makes a difference. Yeah, it's still exceeding the G square test. Try 1500s here and two tenths here. And we're going to bump this PPM up too. And I'm going to try 200s on my centering error. Yeah, I'm still I'm still exceeding the the error value. So I'm not because I'm not a Starnet expert. I don't I'm not sure if the way if I have the way I have this if this is getting applied. I hope it's getting applied. We have it checked. Oh, looks like these values are in meters. That might be part of it. So that's probably way higher than I want. So yeah, I might have to I might have to get a hold of microsurveyor ask my buddy Logan to see what's going on here with this adjustment. So I'm not passing my test. However, I do have some reasonable values here. I have some reasonable error values here. And what I want you to note is as soon as I incorporate this RTN data, look what happens to my error ellipsis at the 95% confidence level. I'm starting to pass the 700 standard set by the land title spec, right? So on my RTN base here, I'm over. And I'm getting pretty close here on point number four. So once I incorporate that RTN data, I'm no longer meeting the spec. 
the land title survey spec. So you got to be really careful with the RTN data. And let's just go in real quick at the end of this video. Let's just go in and show you the what that network looks like. While we're waiting that to fire up, I'm going to come up here and see if I can see if it's applying my GPS. Yeah, see, it's not applying the it's not applying the GPS vectors. It looks like it's applying the centering error, which is in meters, which means this is way too big. <laughs> but it's not applying the the vector error, so that's got to be a toggle somewhere I got to find. So, anyways, let's look at what this network. Take a look at this network in TBC. And there may be a way to do that also in here. View network plot. So here's the network plot microsurvey. You can see this is my RTN base. And then here's the network that I laid out. Okay, and we can see that in TBC too. So here it is in TBC. You can see it looks the same. RTN base here, and then here's the, the network that we laid out. Again, not, it's not a beautiful network, but uh, it was enough to demonstrate how to use Starnet and show you that RTN uh, really flubs up your network adjustment values. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you one last thing and then we'll end the video. So I just want to show you, I went back in and adjusted my centering and vertical error on my GPS vectors because these values are in meters. I knocked those back down to something a little more realistic. Yeah, my network's still not passing the, the chi square test. So I got to monkey around with this and figure out how, how I get it to apply those uh, standard errors in the project settings to my GPS vector. So I will try and figure that out here in the next few days, and we'll do one last video that, that shows you how to do that, and we'll try and rerun this adjustment and, and get it to pass the T-square test. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you get your uh, RTK and total station data out of TBC so you can uh, run adjustments in StarNet uh, with, that, with that type of data. So thanks for watching.